Hey guys, welcome to this new segment that we're doing called Ask Mr. Truck, because look who's here! Kent with MrTruck.com. Thanks for flying me in, Roman. It was great. Yeah, you know, we put him up at the most expensive hotel in town, which happens to be your house because you live like 20 miles from here. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys send us a lot of questions. I mean, we get a lot of truck questions every day. And so I've compiled those questions for you, Kent, and some are very specific and some are very general. And we're going to answer your questions on this segment called Ask Mr. Truck. Cool. You so, know, I'm, I'm really happy to see the quality of questions. These are very good questions. Yeah, uh, you guys are smarter than we are. So let's get right to it. John Harrington asks, I've been looking at Ram trucks a lot lately. More specifically, a 2016 Ram 3500 SLT 4x4 with the 6.7 Cummins and the G56 manual transmission. See, these are very specific questions based on your experience with these trucks throughout the years. You've had a lot of experience, Kate. You have to admit that's true. Yeah, I'm an old man. This, <laughs> this is how that works. What's your personal opinion on the build quality? I've always heard people talk down on Ram, Chrysler, and Jeep saying they're unreliable, cheaply built, and all around not great. What do you guys think? So what do you think? We'll start with the uh, the manual transmission. I mean, it's the only one out there you can even buy in, you know, say, a half ton up. And, and there's a reason for that. It has to do with the asbestos in the clutches. People don't understand that, that the asbestos kept the heat out of the clutch. They can put more weight on them, they do all these things to it. When that became illegal, they have to find an alternative. So your clutches are not as heavy duty as they used to be. And so a lot of people have gone away from that. Plus the manufacturers, they, they think that they know more with their computers than we do about shifting. So they have more faith in them. And so their warranty has always been better on the automatic. But the, you look at a Ram, they have three choices of, of Cummins. The least horsepower is the manual transmission. So in my opinion, I would never buy the least power. I always buy the highest power, which is the high output, one with 900 foot-pounds of torque. So that's what I like there. But, uh, you know, I mean, I would look it up what the, the rating, different ratings is on a, say, a, a one ton, if you had a 3.73 axle, which is about the, the lowest you can get with the smallest Cummins power ratio, you're only allowed to tow like 1,755 pounds. If you were to get the one ton with the high output 900 pound feet of torque and the ice and automatic you can go all the way up to 30,250 but that's with the 410 go back to 373 compare apples to apples you're at still at 24,950 a big difference between the two trucks so for not that much money I, I wouldn't you know it's just against my nature to go with a smaller smaller power yeah so for to start with you can only get the manual in the ram so that's your only game in yeah, town there's yeah. no other heavy duties that come with a manual so if you want a manual that's your only choice it only comes in that cummins it only it doesn't right. come with a gas engine so but his question was what about the reliability well that's an interesting question too because ram you know for decades was third place and it had quality issues and whenever i read a review i would always say ram is the most approved truck because they had a ways to go and now they're um, unbelievable how, how dynamically different they are I mean, they've beaten a heavy-duty GM, for crying out loud. So they're in second place in the big trucks. I mean, look at all they've done in the last seven years. They've got to an eight-speed in, in a half ton. They've got air riding. They've got a diesel in a half ton. They've got coil springs in three-quarter tons. They've done all this stuff that's remarkable. I mean, the Ram bit box, that's what it's called? Yeah. That's well, The Ram box in the back, that's yeah. basically the box where you can unlock a, a storage area that's above the rear wheel well, or you know where the rear yeah. wheel well would be. Yeah. Look yeah. at the power wagon; they've come up with so many in the last seven years. It's like a dramatic difference yeah. in, in the company. So now, you know, in the old days, I had a long list of things I complained about. Now I'm down to about two. I'm really happy that Ram has transformed into so much of a higher quality truck. So if you're looking at a truck now, I mean, even the top three have never been this close ever in my 40 years of driving these things. That. I think that you could buy any of the three and still be happy, but I think Ram has really done a good job of transforming the company. And in the ultra-competitive mid-sized truck segment, of course, Ram is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> but but in the half tons, right, mm -hmm. they're just under 20% of the market. So they're, yeah, they've been around 19, 20%, so they're doing well there. And like you just said, in the heavy duty, they're actually second place now. Yeah, that's that's remarkable. I'm, I'm tickled for them. All right, let me go to question number two. Blake McCain asks, hey, you guys, I'm in the market for a heavy-duty gasoline engine truck, right? Now that's uh, it's kind of a rare beast. I've watched y'all's videos on Ram 6.4 Hemi, but I haven't seen one on the heavy-duty 
5.7 Hemi. I've tested, drove both the 5.7 Hemi, seems like it has more muscle than the 6.4. Was hoping maybe you guys could get your hands on a 2500 5.7 to do some towing and MPG. Which one is better? Basically he wants to know, should you go for the 5.7 or the 6.4 Hemi? Well back, I'm the towing guy, so I wasn't yeah. it was the most powerful, just like in the last question. I went to 6.4 and I know the 5.7 sounds cooler going down the road, I mean I've noticed that. But the 6.4, more horsepower, more torque, it's got the MDS, you should have half the cylinders if you're cruising into Kansas. So I'd always go with the bigger engine, but that's, you know, we wait for these bigger engines. When they come, why would you go back to an engine they've had for a long time? I mean, I like both Hemis, I just wish the 6.4 sounded like the 5.7. Yeah, and I think you're probably going to get better resale on the bigger engine too, because once again, you'll have more towing capability, you'll have a better, more all-around powerful truck, and more people are going to want it. Yeah, and in, in a heavier duty, you can actually get with the ice and transmission. So uh, that's a nice combination to have. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of things about it, like in agriculture where you can shut off uh, four cylinders when you run the PTO. So I mean, it, it, commercially, a lot of advantage with the 6.4. So that's my direction I would go. There you go, okay. DJ Volk asks, I recently read that the new Ford diesel limits torque in the first three gears for the single wheel, only in the first gear on the dually, right? So there's less torque that you can apply right. when accelerating. Does it limit? Uh, differently based on the rear end gearing, more on the 355 or less on the 331. Also, how would the two identical F350 SRW or DRW compare to zero to 60 and quarter mile times based on the torque limiting? So basically he wants to know why and uh, how come they're limiting torque on these big trucks, especially the dualies. Yeah, well, it's all about power to the wheel, just like your Hellcat. You know, what do you got to start third gear because that thing will burn the tires <laughs> off? So it's the same kind of thing. You fourth. The, oh, fourth gear? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, a, that's, that's exactly the right relation. And you get to these big trucks pulling big loads. I mean, you don't just sit there and smoke the tires at the stop sign. So that, and Ram does the same thing. When they come out 900 foot pounds of torque, it takes the third gear before you get all that power. And that's what you want. You'll be going down the road before you have full power. And that's that's what and that, that's a very tough question. No acceleration. I actually put in a call to Ford. I'm still waiting for Ford to answer that because that part I, I don't know. Never even heard of that answer. And you know, logically, you would think a lower axle ratio would get to the RPMs faster, so that it would burn the tires quicker. So I, you know, that could be a difference. But that's nothing that they've ever released or anything. So it's a it's a question I have into them. We'll find out. But uh, you know, that's what it's all about. And the dualies, of course, you can first gear taken off that you have more wheel on the ground so you have more traction so it can handle that kind of gear plus you're probably pulling a very big load so it's not going to go take it off it's going to have to roll up the speed so that makes sense to me yeah it makes sense to me i don't think that you're losing much all you're losing is uh buying additional tires because that's what you would do right you just burn the tires yeah. off the truck because yeah. there's no weight on the back unless you're towing so you would just you would just be yeah and, yeah. and yeah it's 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 it you know it costs you more. All right, let's go to the next question. Heading My Way wants to know, Ford has stated that the torque is 925 on the 2017 6.7 diesel, 925 pound-foot of torque on the new diesel, which is uh, remarkable. However, Ford is now stating 975 at the Hershey PA RV show. So somebody at the Hershey PA RV show told him that it's 975 and not 925. Um, what is the right number? He wants to know. And uh, then he goes on to say, uh, does it depend on what RAM does? Have you heard anything? 925 is one number I've heard of. That's one number I've heard too. Yeah, and I need to know, was he talking to a salesman there or to it's a, a salesman, rep? Yeah. A salesman, that could be anything. Yeah, it could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be, it could be 9,000. <laughs> yeah, the thing with, with RVs, let's say a Class C, a Class C RV from Ford would be a 53 model number, and it would have uh, whatever engine the pickups have. That's all it is, a 110 like an ambulance would have. So all that would be exactly the same. Now, if it was, then which is different than what the what's the van called Transit? Transit now has a you know bigger version of all kinds of things, but it only goes up like 10,000 GBW, or it's 14 on the, the reliable E350, 450 we've had forever. But if you were going to a Class A motorhome, then that could be anything because that could be a Spartan chassis, it could be a, a Freightliner, it could be anything uh, with a Ford engine in it. So that'd be a number that I wouldn't even know about. That would, you'd have to look through the RV system. But a normal Class C would be no different than a truck. Actually, a lot of the times, uh, they didn't have room for an intercooler, so it would be less power. So, uh, yeah, oh, 925 is all I've heard of. I haven't heard of any rumors in any other direction. Now, if you go to a 650 with the same engine, it's going to have less horsepower and torque. And that's another, and I think we have a question on that later on that I can answer so, about that. So, so I would almost be willing to bet money that Ram will increase their torque, because that's the other part of his question. You know, he wants to know, will Ram keep up with the Fords? And, and Ram does that, man. They, 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 you know, they, they've been yeah. taking pride in the fact that they've had the most powerful 
heavy duty truck out there and mm -hmm. now Ford is taking that crown away. So I can see I can see Ram, you know, turning up the, the boost yeah. a little bit on the turbo. And Ram does that. Ram will actually surprise you and jump up to a number that I didn't think they would do. Ford just does it a little at a time, whatever they have to, because they save their bullets for the next time. So Yeah, wait, I mean it's a war, right? So stay yeah. tuned. There'll be yeah. more. Alright, um XPLM Mr. One wants to know. I'm curious, this is an interesting question actually, since the new uh, uh, 2017 heavy duties Ford just came out. I'm curious to know how much narrower the new shared with the F-150 cab is than the previous model, considering the fact that everybody keeps saying how it is bigger than the 99 through 19 to 2016 Super Duty cab. Basically, he's asking, um, is the new heavy duty cab narrower? And the reason he's saying that is I hear that there's more leg room and headroom, yet the new 2017 crew cab has 131.8 total cubic feet of interior volume versus the 2016 crew cab's 135.5 cubic feet. Where is it smaller if all the mentioned details dimensions are larger? So I, you, you went and drove the new Ford Heavy Duties, right? right? The share cab with the F-150. Does it seem smaller or narrower to you? No, it actually they're all different dimensions. The super cab, the regular cab, and the crew cab are all bigger. The crew cab is the least bigger. It's yeah. three inches longer. Okay. And what makes it look so much bigger is because like the 150, they have that flat load floor in the second second row seat, so it looks a lot bigger, kind of like a Meg cab, you climb in and you have all this leg room, and so it, it, it visually it looks a lot different, but it's only three inches. It, it, same cab, 1999, was largest back then, then became the smallest, and now I was glad to see them go up to that cab. What I don't like about it is they raised the bed rail to match the lines on that cab. Uh, so now we got an inch deeper bed because of that. But no, I don't think they're any narrower. I haven't felt any of that. I mean, I, I looked at the all kinds of stuff in the seats, but it feels a lot bigger in the back. But that's all it is, it's three inches. So that's what you have. Well, Kent, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there, and that's why you wrote this. <laughs> wow, this is a <laughs> shameless nuts. promo for our new book, <laughs> Truck Nuts. It's available right now. Go to Amazon, go to Barnes & Noble, go to your local bookstore and get Truck Nuts. It's a complete guide to pickups. It is. It covers all the things we can think of that nobody else you know, will tell you about. We want to answer those tough questions, and that's what the book's all about. Yeah, and we've got not only that, but we've also got all of our uh, Ike Gauntlet testing yes. in here summarized. And you've got a lot of interesting facts that I learned reading it about your life. So if you want to know more about Mr. Truck <laughs> and you're in the market for a brand new pickup truck, be it light duty, be it heavy duty, be it mid-sized, right. it's all in here. Truck nuts available right now. All right, and this last, uh, well, this is actually a comment, but I thought I'd share this with you because I'm proud of the team. Just thought I would comment and say, I enjoy the reviews and videos you do. That's really nice. Appreciate the work. Uh, I enjoy reviews because it's normal guys reviewing cars and trucks like everybody else. Glad it doesn't get so technical and it's laid back. Looking forward to more stuff from you all. Actually, that was pretty technical. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. That was from Ryan Reese. So thank you, Ryan. We appreciate the kind words and we hope you like this new format. And if you have any questions for Mr. Truck for the next episode of Ask Mr. Truck, just email us at info at TFL Truck or Ask Mr. Truck at TFL Truck and we will get your questions answered or better yet, just put them in the comments below. Make them easy. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out TFLTruck.com and of course, MrTruck.com for more news, views, and of course, everyday real world truck reviews. See you next time. Ciao. <laughs>